December 6th in the greenhouse. Happy birthday to my friend Chris. Thanks for everything you've helped me with, man. It means a lot. So, Tuesday, December 8th, here in the greenhouse. You see the coffee trees are starting to grow again with the uh, thermal mass changes. And the parsley is growing. And there's even new shoots coming out on the Meyer lemon trees up here on the bench. And today I was reassessing the Ponderosa lemon pot to see if any of these had germinated. I was almost getting ready to dump it and then I saw it looks like we have one that germinated. So I'm going to be patient, wait a little longer, and we'll see. Uh, over here, things are doing really well. Uh, reconfigured the lights a little bit. Uh, the uh, older coffee tree, since I pruned it and I've been watering it, and it's had a little better warmth, is starting to grow again. Uh, still have not gotten back in here with the foliar feed, but that's uh, up and coming soon. Uh, the lemon tree is flowering out new flowers, setting new fruits, etc., etc., so that's doing well. The uh, fig tree seems to, be, see, seems to still kind of be stalled, but uh, that's okay. Uh, growth on everything over here. <coughs> the... Um, uh, sweet potatoes are doing pretty well. Ginger seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, they're definitely getting lots of warmth in here now with things uh, a little better insulated and heated. Uh, rosemary is doing well. Uh, main reason I flipped the camera on for tonight was uh, I was playing around with uh, some upgrades I want to do to the thermal mass uh, heat loop system. Uh, I was thinking about uh, putting a, a couple of solenoids in line with the single pump and make it so I could circulate uh, through the coil either directly back to this tank like I typically do or bypass this tank and send the heat straight from the coil to the secondary barrels then through the loop and then possibly putting in a bypass so I can run by the barrels and go right to the loop with heat off of the coil so we can have some uh, a little better control and variability over warming these beds um, and keeping plant comfort. Uh, so uh, I pulled out, I dug up an old uh, solenoid. This is the old solenoid off my old aeroponics unit. I had built in an automatic flush system in that years back and I used a couple of solenoids to control uh, pumping new water in and old water out and all that kind of thing so I could uh, run an automatic flush cycle on it. Uh, these solenoids were adapted from P&T Surplus, it's a local uh, surplus store. They have all kinds of industrial commercial stuff. Very cool place. Uh, in fact, maybe I should do a video over there one of these days. That would be a cool video to uh, share with the audience. But, um, so I pulled it out and I thought I would try it. And uh, these are actually, I think these were actually designed for 12 volt AC. And of course, I'm running DC. I always ran them on DC and they worked, but I found they only really uh, allowed water through under pretty high pressures. I think they're just very small ports inside. So I wired it up and tested it, and it does work, but uh, it does not allow bypass back to the tank just because these solenoids aren't that great. Uh, so I found uh, some solenoids on Amazon. When I get the money together, I'll get those and... Uh, I'll play around with the solenoid thing. For now, I'm just piping the heat straight through to the loop. Um, but I just thought I would share this idea or concept. Uh, so the idea being two solenoids here coming off the heat coil. Uh, one solenoid, when it's open, dumps your water directly back to the secondary tank here. When that's closed, you have two other options. Uh, when the solenoid, the second solenoid is closed, you'd be sending heat through the barrels like we normally do and when it's open you'd bypass the barrels and go straight through to the loop um, and then uh, that would be a much lower power requirement using a single pump and the other thing I thought of if you wanted to ramp the speed at which you dump in water you could actually pair two pumps and run one pump on one pump off or both pumps on depending on how fast you wanted to transfer heat 
So lots of flexibility options I'm looking at here. I uh, just have to wait until I have the budget to get the parts. Um, but in the meantime, my friend Jack from Geeky Gardens, if you have not seen the Geeky Gardens YouTube channel, you need to go check it out. Jack's a really cool guy. Uh, he's been taking care of some really cool kitty cats, and he has his own garden. He does a lot of cool experiments, and he's a really sweet guy. And he's one of my mods here on my YouTube channel. So uh, anyway, he sent me what's called an RTL SDR. And I know this is not the best shot of it, and I don't want to unplug it because I've been trying to... I've been messing with it. But basically what this is, is a uh, software-defined radio receiver controller. And the idea is I'm going to capture the data straight from the new weather station uh, right here on the Raspberry Pi. We'll capture that data right out of the air, intercept it, collect it, and add it to the database as part of the database logger. So we have all of our weather data, our temperature data, our control data, everything in-house on the Raspberry Pi server. And then as we go forward, eventually Arduino will, will handle all the controls for turning things on and off and collecting the data. And the Raspberry Pi will act more as a server function than it does as a controller function like it does now. Um, not sure if we're going to use actual Arduino or we're going to use a board that uh, my friend Aaron uh, is developing or some other option. We might use ESP32. Uh, There's lots of options. We're still exploring that. But I just thought I would share it. I got it plugged in. <laughs> I didn't even put an actual antenna on it. I just got a piece of solder plugged into the connector to see if it'll get a signal. And um, I was just messing around with getting the software installed and all. But uh, that's an upcoming project. Once I uh, figure that all out, of course, I will share that in the form of video. Form of a video here on my channel. So after a little bit of fiddling, I did manage to get the uh, GQRX program working with the RTL SDR and I did find that my frequency transmit on the weather station I believe that's it is 431.997 and uh, that horrible noise you hear is the data signal so uh, I did manage to get uh, basic testing working <laughs> even with my totally insufficient antenna here but uh, I just wanted to test it out and see the uh, waterfall and the spectral view and all that stuff show up and work and that the receiver works. So uh, now we can play with data capture and inserting that to the database. We'll get back to that. Uh, meantime, uh, I guess I'll just give you a shot of the charts here while we are in the greenhouse. And you can see I've been running the stove pretty hot. And uh, I've been keeping the pump on the whole time and just pumping the barrel temperatures up. I want to see how hot I can get them. Uh, the stove right now is running at 2-2 and uh, two open, two full turns open on each throttle input. And uh, we're, you know, we're climbing temperature pretty well here on the barrels. I want to see if I can uh, get that up to 120 tonight. I'm running some uh, green ash in there, um, but uh, for those who don't know, green ash is uh, the only wood I'm aware of that you can actually burn green, burn green and not produce a lot of creosote. Uh, it's also a pretty high heat production. Uh, dry, it's about 20 million BTUs to the cord. I don't know what it is wet, but I don't think it's a whole lot lower than that. And it performs really well, so that's a nice uh, sort of a rescue tree. If I run low on firewood, I can go out, drop a green ash, bring it in, cut it, split it, and run the stove on it. And it produces good heat. So, uh, I don't know. I just thought I would share an update. I know I haven't done an update in a while. Things are really busy. I'm trying to get a whole bunch of new stuff together and uh, keep all the old stuff rolling and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I thought I would share, do a quick update. I hope you found this interesting or informative. And I hope you'll come out and check out my show later tonight, Comrades in Farms. That's uh, on Truth Frequency Radio. If you go to tfrlive.com and click on Listen Live, you can listen to the audio there. Or if you want to watch it on my YouTube channel, assuming I don't have any more YouTube issues or uh, OBS Broadcaster Studio software issues, I will also be broadcast live on YouTube. That's here on the YouTube channel of the Pharmacy Seeds Network. All right, I hope you found this interesting or informative. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. December 9th, 2020. What tool do you need to get water this time of year? Yeah, that's right, the hammer. About an inch and a half of ice here on top of the Ram Reservoir Pool. 
and uh, every day I truck a couple of buckets in. You see, there's a lot of ice in there. Uh, thank God for lots of uh, heat from the furnace to warm that back into water. Just thought I'd share a little clip.